All right, people. So apparently Kendrick Lamar's life is in danger. Now, this Drake and Kendrick beef that we once thought was the softest hip-hop beef ever may just turn into a bloodbath after all. The guy responsible for escalating the softest rap beef in hip-hop history to these new heights is this Somalian immigrant called Hassan Ali, a.k.a. Top 5 The Rapper. Now, Top 5 The Rapper is also known as like the Brown 6 9 without the snitching and all the agitation. Now, this dude apparently just got out of jail for murder, and he's itching to go back. I mean, this does absolutely nothing for immigration PR. So at some point about two years ago, he was charged with first-degree murder for his role in the murder scheme and plot that took the life of an accountant student called Hashami Hashi. Now, police believe that this was a case of mistaken identity, and these dudes are just really dumb and really stupid and took the wrong guy. And they believe that Top 5 was one of the drivers that participated in this because first they charged him with accessory to murder, and then they came back and said, no, 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 no. This guy was fully involved in a weird, bro. He got to go, too. So he was arrested and fought the case. Now, I'll be real, bro. Like, when you take a look at the case details and who's involved, we all thought Top 5 was dead in the waters and almost a goner. But apparently Drake, Champagne Poppy, a.k.a. The Boy, paid for his lawyer fees and paid for some really good lawyers. You know, that gave him, I guess, the fight to fight this in court. You know, gave him the ammunition to actually beat this. And he came home, right? He's now home. He's now a free man. And he feels indebted to Drake. And because he feels indebted to Drake, man, he's now going doing a podcasting tour, doing an IG live tour, doing a streaming tour, where he's sending shots at Kendra Lamar and anybody who rocks with Kendra Lamar. Kendra Lamar can't come yeah. to Toronto. I'm here. He yo, yo, home. yo, here's the reality. All of this Kendrick Lamar, all this bullshit, we needed to hear from the real Achilles. Yo, we needed to hear from the GGs what's, what's going on. We're going to slap Kendrick if we see him. Oh, shit. You know? You know, you know why I never jumped. That little the, boy that will slap. You know why I never jumped the first day out. Yeah. You know why I never jumped the first day out. Yeah. I went to my crazy man and I prepared them little things for Kendrick, man. I prepared the little things, everything for my boy Kendrick. I want to greet him. I want to greet him. So Yo, bad. could Kendrick come to the six? Kendrick say about a book of show. He he, he say about to shut the place down. Still. You sure? Probably gonna be with all the police. <laughs> no, even he's with the police. He's done. <laughs> done. He's done. He's done. He's done. He ain't coming. He ain't fucking coming. It's over. Me I must emphasize that this man got out of jail for murder 24 hours ago, and he's already looking for creative options to go back, which is why I don't understand for the likes of me why a lot of you guys is wasting your breaths and efforts and marching boots on prison reform. These dudes not trying to get reformed, bro. They go to prison and come out much worse. They're just bad people, bro. All right, a lot of these dudes are just horrible human beings. Now, this dude in particular, I'll be real, if I thought he was stupid enough to only be instigating and drawing more negative attention to himself online for clout, that would make me feel a lot better. But if I'm being honest here, I do think he's savvy enough to at least attempt to go out of his way to earn the trust of Drake, and that may come in an attempt at trying to press Kendra Lamar. Like, when Kendra Lamar does come to Toronto, he may try to make a posturing move to where he's not really trying to do anything. He's not really trying to shoot Kendra Lamar, hurt Kendra Lamar. He just wants to go catch Kendra Lamar on camera, yell at him from a distance, and make it seem like he's pressing him. I mean, he has done this before. He did this to Lil TJ. Lil TJ came to Toronto by himself, him and his goons, brought cameras to record Lil TJ and yell at him and then post online and said they pressed him. So, you know, he has pulled antics like this before in the past. TJ, walk on. Fad right here. Fad. Fad. What? Them GGs got you. Fad. Fad, you goof. Come to the corner, then. Stop doing it for the camera. Come to the corner. Come to the corner. I do think he's at least savvy enough to try to pull that off, which is why I think this could be an absolute bloodbath. Kendrick Lamar and who he rolled with, they're not Lil TJ, right? They're not a bunch of 19, 20-year-olds at the time who's new to fame and got probably like about three years into the streets. These are dudes who are 35-plus savvy, I guess, street veterans, savvy gangbangers who've been gangbanging all their life. These dudes are not about to let you pull out a camera and get a moment on them, bro. If you pull out that camera 
and act like you're going to be aggressive or act like you really want it, they're going to bring everything you're asking for to you. And when they bring it to you, well, you're going to be forced, you know, to pull out whatever you want to pull out and use it or run away, you know, and be punked on camera by them. So this is why I'm saying, right, like, I know he's going to try to pull something like this off when Kendrick Lamar and them is probably in Toronto chilling. And when he does this, it's going to end very badly. Now, he doesn't stop. Like, they would, like, don't like the whole live stream stuff, right? Like, they would go ahead and speak on Kendrick, then go off on a tangent, but he just kept on bringing it back to Kendrick Lamar, man. <laughs> There's 16-year-old boys. I just came on. Bro. I just came on. I seen a 16-year-old boy that told me I can't wait to see Kendrick. Just stay home, five. It's on me. I'm a like, holy fuck. I don't got to do the dirty work. No, yeah. For once. For once. Usually it's me behind that. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. A 16-year-old is about to circumvent the complex security of Kendrick Lamar and smoke him while he's in Toronto. Yo, listen, man. I just want two people right now, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm not, it's not a threat. I'm just looking for Metro Boomin and Kendrick Lamar. I'm doing my homework right now. I'm doing my task on them right now. Nothing incriminating. I'm just looking for them. If you ran it, if you ran to Metro Boomin or Kendrick, what would that I want Metro Boomin one on one. Yeah, I don't want no weapons. Nothing. I'm knocking. We're putting a bag on that fight. Still, Kendrick Five is sleeping. I'm first Kendrick round. Man. You go. You you pass the border. You passed the border, man. Chubbs calling me. You passed the border, man. You passed the border, man. <laughs> he wants to box Metro Boomin and do hand on hand combat, but take it to the streets with Kendra Lamar. Now, even with the hand on hand combat and the boxing, bro, I'm not sure why his homies is trying to bet money on his head, or I don't know why he's so confident that he's going to beat Metro Boomin. Bro, Metro Boomin is about like six foot two. You know, he's in decent shape, he's pretty agile. A top five is about five foot three. Who, in his words, is a self admitted shooter. He's not even a boxer. So I don't know why he's so confident or cocky that he's going to beat him. Right? This just seems like a disaster waiting to happen. Now, Kendra Lamar homies was on their podcast and they responded back to all the threats that Kendra Lamar was getting from top five and others. Now, they didn't just keep, you know, their response to Top 5. They also addressed other people that was on the call with Top 5. Nigga, what? Top 5. Oh, did he see that smack? What about it? Oh, Nigga smack, did he see it play for smack? Yeah. He looking for who? Dot. He looking for Dot? He said, I'm yeah. looking for that nigga. And whoever, and he said, and, and he, he said, said, said he shook Q. He said, he shook Q showdown. He said, showdown. He, said he, he made the call to shook Q showdown. And who is he? Top five, top five. five. He a big-ass rapper from, from the street. Rapper from Toronto. 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 Yeah. Fuck you in Toronto. Top five. <laughs> Bring it, bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't got to come find us. We'll find you, bitch. <laughs> so, pull it up. Pull it up. So, pull it up. Hey, so the nigga Drake finna do a stream, and he said, and he, whoever on the stage, finna be looking at whoever was on that stage. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> he's from Canada, Eden Ross? No, he's Jewish, nigga. Where he's from? He like, fuck it. He like, Florida. He like, turn this shit off. This shit trash. Oh, so Aiden Ross tripping too? Oh, for sure, for sure. Nigga, What's slap like? your bitch he took, ass, he took, his he took his Smack is one of the best dudes that I've ever met. He's really loyal. Do I think that Smack want to do harm to Aiden Ross? No. Right? I don't feel like Smack would do harm to Aiden Ross. Like, Smack understands that Aiden Ross is a content creator, bro. Right? But do I feel like Smack want to do harm to Top 5? I don't think Smack want to do harm to Top 5, bro. But if Top 5 comes playing with Smack, Smack gonna give Top 5 everything he's asking for. I can guarantee that. Now, Top 5 hasn't responded back to Smack yet. However, Aiden Ross did, and Aiden Ross claims he's gonna sue Smack. He's coming to LA with security. Security gonna put hands on him, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Cool, cool. Mics are good. Banned from LA. I'm not banned from LA, bro. I yeah, wish somebody would. I swear to God. I'm gonna go to LA. Nobody's gonna get to me. I promise you, bro. I don't give a like, you think I'm scared of L.A.? What? I lived in L.A. for years and years and years. I'm not banned from L.A. F*** that old-ass motherfucking podcast, bro. I'll smack the out of you. Well, not me, but I'm going to have security smack the out of you. Not me. I, I don't, I, you know, but I'm going to have security smack the out of you and beat your ass. It's that simple, bro. I love Y'all are about to witness the most hilarious series of events ever. So, Ed and Rose is on live stream reacting to the video of Smack and them talking. In real time, and in real time, he's telling them, like, you can't ban me from L.A., I'm going to come, I got money, whatever. 
I'm going to have security with me and security is going to smack you and beat you up. Yo, now I've seen people, I guess, flex their goon power. I've never seen people flex their security power. And can security even do that? Like, can security even, like, provoke and instigate an issue and smack somebody on behalf of you if you're not being attacked? I don't know, right? So Aiden Ross is speaking like he's with the business, right? He's with the business. He's, you know, he's down for all the smoke because he got security and he got money. So then AD from Community, he responded back and he just said one thing. He just said, hey, bro, Aiden, you know, just word of advice, bro. Security get popped all the time. I tell you what, back on Fig is going to be amazing tomorrow. You got top oh, five. Yeah. You yeah. got top five. He ain't responded yet, huh? That's top five no. responded? No. You got top five and then you got Aiden Ross. Aiden Ross still on business. He said, yeah. he said he gonna have a security beat him up. He gonna come to LA, nigga, do it up. Aiden Ross, let me uh, let me give you a tip. Security get popped every day, B. What if a security guard sends you a message back? Like, shut your bitch ass up, I'll pop. So after AD acknowledged, hey bro, we not scared of security, Aiden Ross tone has switched now. He's no longer confident. He's no longer trying to get them beat up by his security. He now wants to sue. He now wants to put them in jail for making a threat to pop his security guard if the security guard put hands on them. Hey, Ross, let me, uh, let me give you a tip. Security get popped every day, B. So come do it. Go to jail for the rest of your life. It's so worth it, bro. Your shitty life. Come on, let's try it. Let's, let's, let's make some magic happen. Come on, try it. At least you'll go to jail for, what, minimum five years in L.A.? What is it? I'll get, I got the best lawyers of all time, baby. Let's do it. And I'm a low-key sue you for that. You want to? I can't wait. Yo, let me get that clip again. Put that on my phone right now. Send that right to my lawyer. I promise you I'm serving you ASAP. Don't ever threaten my life again, you big bitch. Go start a family. This podcast shit's not for you. I'm not, I'm not a gangster. I'm not about that life at all. That's why I said security's going to do what they're going to do. But now I'm going straight to my lawyers. Sneeko, should he be scared? Man, he's got the good lawyers on. To think the softest rap beef in history would now result in my friends, <laughs> AD and others being sued, Aiden Ross, security guard being popped, and top five potentially going back to jail for life. Hey, listen, man. We all just have to relax, right? We have to relax, all right? Now, if you're still watching this, man, click on this video right here to find out while Cardi B just proved to be the nastiest woman on earth. Click on this video here to find out what I'm talking about. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.